Good morning. Welcome to the live stream of the Word of God today at Lighthouse Church, Bitten, Arkansas. But we have to start this portion out with Shelly Romero. She's going to sing and minister to us in song. We just want to be open to the Lord and let the Lord minister to us and live stream in this building and let Jesus be exalted. Yes. Amen. I got to tell you before I sing this morning, I've got a testimony I just want to throw out there. I have been in uh, severe pain in my left shoulder this week, this past week, and uh, I didn't go to the doctor. I had called and set up an appointment. I thought, you know, I'm going to pray about it and we'll stand on the word first. And I'm going to tell you what, look at this. I can raise my arm and there is no pain. I couldn't raise my arm. I couldn't hold anything. But now I can praise God yes, with my I left can. arm. to get in the word today hallelujah aren't you aren't you glad to know that uh, God didn't leave us just uh, wandering around hoping we'd get get through this life but he gave us something called the word of God amen swords in the air this is my Bible it's God's holy word I am who it says I am I can do what it says I can do I will be taught the word of the living God, faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. You know, we're going to... Um, we're going to tarry this morning. What does that say on the screen? Faith is now. Faith is now. now. 
and uh, we're going to look at this, uh, you know, uh, and uh, turn to Hebrews, Hebrews uh, chapter 11, and we're going to tarry there for a minute. Uh, but, you know, um, as I was uh, studying last night, uh, and I've heard, I've heard other ministers say this, that uh, the first uh, three words of that 11, 1, chapter 11, verse 1, is now faith is. But, and faith is now. So let's, let's say, now faith is. Now faith is. And faith is now. And faith is now. Okay. So, uh, and it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I like to say it like this. That faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen with my natural senses. I like to say it like that because faith is a thing of the spirit eyes, not the natural eyes. And, uh, and so like this morning, we've prayed for many requests in between the live streams. We prayed, and when we prayed, we prayed by faith. Which means uh, we, we didn't see it right this moment. We didn't see it. Because we're praying for people outside of this house. But by faith, we see it answered and done by our spirit eyes. Amen? Amen. That's how it works. And so uh, in the Greek, uh, if you look at uh, the word substance, it says, Now faith is the substance. And so I looked up the substance in the original writing, and it said, a setting under support. And so if, uh, if every one of you would look right now, there's a substance underneath you right now, and it's called a pew, a bench, if you will. And if that wasn't there, all of you would be falling down the floor, wouldn't you? And so, are the pews real? Is it something you can touch and you can feel? Is that real? Then that is a substance. There is something there. And so, I want us to stop looking at faith as being something off somewhere, but something that you really can touch and feel and hold and know uh, because it is something spiritual and a, something that is spiritual is alive. It is full of life if you will. And so when I looked up, uh, I, I looked, and actually I looked in two or three different places, but uh, it, it, in the Webster, it said essence, uh, that's a distinctive characteristic of something. And so now then, it is labeling that my faith has a characteristic. It, it has something. Because, see, let me tell you what we do if we're not careful. Those of us who are word churches, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll find a scripture and, and uh, we'll just quote it. Uh, but yet, uh, you know, it's just like we're numb to believing that God really is fixing this. That he really is. But why? Be because, see, what we're doing, we're still dealing with uh, opposition. Or we're still dealing with pain. Or we're still dealing with um, a, a depression or whatever it is. And so we're just standing empty-handedly quoting the Scripture. But we've got to understand that, that it is the confidence in the Scripture that causes the thing to break and change. It's not just saying it out loud, but it'd be like, uh, you know, just, uh, I could get this, okay, there's proof. There are many Bible scholars that knows this Bible a whole lot better than I do. I'm just going to tell you up front that they, boy, they could quote you Scripture by Scripture, but I don't see, I, I don't see any uh, a proof of the scripture. You know, in other words, they're standing quoting the scripture uh, over and over and over, year after year after year, and there's no proof. And so just quoting the scripture is not going to change your life and change the things that you need changed. It is the confidence and the belief that you have in the scripture. And as you say it, believe in what you're saying is what will transform and change that situation. Amen. Are we understanding that? And so it says, now, now faith is, and faith is now. And so faith isn't something that I can hope for tomorrow, that today I'm going to pray about this, and, I, and I'm, I'm hoping that tomorrow will change. No, either faith is right now, or it's not faith. 
So faith is now, and now is faith. And then, um, and oh yeah, let's see. I looked up, um, yes, this was good. In the Webster, it said the inward nature, the inward nature, or true substance of something. And so there it goes again. It's talking about that substance. And, uh, and so you've got to see uh, you've got to see that it is actual belief. Okay, so uh, if there's a scripture that says, Upon himself, he took every sickness and every disease, and he bore it in my place, and with his stripes I'm healed. Now, I can, I can speak that out every day and, uh, and be numb to what it's really saying, and I'm, I'll die in my sickness. But if I can get, if I can get a hold of today, that that word, first of all, I got, I've got to get it settled in my heart and in my life that that word cannot lie. Because God is, is who moved upon by his spirit, moved upon men to write this book. Can I get an amen in the house? So since mere men, because you might, you know, there are people out there that says, uh, you're crazy for following a book of uh, information. You know, they do nowadays, uh, especially those Scientologists and, and different people who don't believe in this book. And so if, you, if you're not careful, and the reason I'm teaching this body, because this body, uh, we're, we're believers, fill the spirit, and we pray for people with ailments. With some bad things going on. And we get some of them uh, go on and leave this earth and go home to be with the Lord. And some of them come out of that bed of sickness and, and live and, and proclaim the word. Amen. And uh, so what, well, how the re end result is, is none of our business. What is our business, though, is believing what we're saying and what we're praying. Amen. That's our business. And so uh, I, I don't want us to get in the rut of just speaking the word of God. I want us to get a victorious in speaking the word of God because we believe it. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 So now faith, let's read this together. Let's do this again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay, things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen with our natural senses. Okay? Okay, so here we go. I looked up the word things. It says, now faith is a substance. So substance is a support. It's a setting under. It's a distinctive characteristic of something. That's what faith is. Faith is an inward nature or true substance of something. And I love the last two words that have said what faith is. It's confidence. Faith is confidence. Okay, so now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use scripture uh, that um, uh, that upon himself he took every sickness and every disease and bore it in my place, and with his stripes I'm healed. I can quote that word, and I can believe that it's true, and still not get well. I'm trying to give y'all reasons that why year after year after year, whatever you're doing, but to get the Bible uh, in active in your everyday life, then I must have, say I must have, I must have. confidence in that word. See, I've got to be confident in it. You know, um, if there's, uh, you know, in everyday life, you know, there's times that you would say, well, you know, I'm really confident that, uh, that uh, Sally's going to be here at 12 o'clock. You didn't have a doubt in the world that Sally wouldn't be there at 12 o'clock. But you didn't know. Her car might have broke down. She might have had uh, uh, some sickness in the family or something that wouldn't have got her there at 12 o'clock. But because she was a, a woman of her word and she was someone who you could trust, you would, you would say, you would say to your family or whatever, well, I'm very confident that I know, I know her. But see, we got to get very confident that we know God. And, uh, and let me tell you, I'm going to tell you, saints, the one thing as a pastor that I deal with on a regular basis of Christians is this. What have I done wrong that I'm going through this? You have no idea how many times I hear that. You have no idea. And it's because that when you're under a siege of attack, 
And here's how the Lord showed this to me one time years ago. That there are times that you have uh, a one singular uh, uh, spirit, evil spirit that comes against you. And you'll wrestle that thing and you'll get him, you know, you'll get victory over it and move on. But there are other times that the army comes to hit you. And when the army comes after you, they set up camp in your yard. And that's when it's an onslaught of oppression. It comes against your finances. It comes against your health. It comes against... It's, have you ever had a time in your life that you said this? It seems like everything I touch, it, it's, it affects it. Every time, every move I make, everywhere I turn, it is like I can't get out of one thing until I'm in another. Have you ever had that going in your life? That's because you had an army of evil spirits that set up against you, trying to come against you and dismantle your faith. Do you understand? He doesn't care if you have all the houses in the world and all the land, but faith pleases God because without faith, the substance of what you're hoping for and the confidence in his word, without it, you cannot please God. And so that's why you're going through it. But let me tell you, Christians, when you're going through it, don't, don't buy that ticket from the devil of what have I done wrong? Don't let, don't, don't let, don't entertain that thought. The first thing you need to say is I know I belong to God. Good, bad, and ugly, I belong to God. He's my father and he's going to get me through this. I may be walking through the fire right now, but he's got the water hose. He's the one that can put the fire out. See, you got to get, say this out loud, I must be confident in what the word says. Amen. Amen. Okay, so here we go. So then, uh, so I gotta have, I gotta have, I've gotta have true confidence that what I'm speaking and what I'm saying shall come to pass. Yeah, but Sister Barbara, I've been speaking that for 10 years now. Well, let me tell you, speak it 10 more if you have to. Don't you move. Don't you back up. Don't you back down. Because if there's anything I've learned in this life, there are seasons of time. You know, in uh, 1997, the Lord spoke to me. I believe it's 97. No, 98. The Lord spoke to me. I lived in Portland, Oregon. He said, I'm sending you back to the south. I did not want to come back to the south. But he said, I'm sending you back to the south. And because I loved him, I said, you know what? If you want me to stand on my head and spit quarters, tell me what corner. Because I just am in love with Jesus. And I knew I was coming back to the south. But, and I was sharing this with uh, uh, Sister Marie this morning before service, that if I had not sought the Lord for the when, where, and how. Now, see, he spoke to me. But if I had just jumped up right then, quit my job, went and rented a truck, drove 2,500 miles across the, the United States, I would have been as lost as a goose in a snowstorm. And then I would have fallen on my face and, and, and would have blamed God for it. Do you understand? And so when God speaks to you a specific thing, and you know, now I'm, I'm no name, no blame, but I hear this a lot. Well, God said, God said, God said, God said. Well, you know, there's only been a few times that I can tell you that God spoke to me. And, uh, and, and I'm telling you, you need to be real careful. You need to start saying the Spirit of the Lord led you, or the Spirit of the Lord said, you know, because uh, uh, we are going to stand before God, and if He's not the one that said to you this, that, and something else, you know, you're going to give an account for that. That's the only thing I fear. I'm not playing. I, I, I do. I reverence God. But I know that, uh, that when he said to me, he was sending me back to the south, and I did not know, had no clue uh, why uh, at, that, at that time. But I began to seek him uh, for when, where, and how. And my children didn't know. I never said a word to them. I didn't say a word to anyone for months and months and months that I laid on my face and sought God for the when, where, and how. And that's, uh, that's because that, uh, that this awesome God, he deals in seasons of time. And so why, why I'm telling you this is that sometimes God, God will give you an unction or he will, he will uh, lead you to, to in a direction. And if you don't get an answer right then, then you lose your confidence in the word. And so what I'm trying to tell you today is that, is that when you know, you know that the Lord gave you something, you know it. 
then what you do with that is you lay it before him. Don't you get discouraged about it because you don't see it happening. What you do is you lay that out before him and you go on living your life as is. Don't try to make it happen. Boy, I'm telling you, I don't know who I'm talking to today. Don't try to force it to happen. Don't try to figure it out. When you know that the Lord has given you something, you lay that out before him and you seek him. When, where, and how. And, wh and when you've spent time in prayer, don't think that you can throw a few words out at God and you're going to get all the answers. I said you spend time in prayer. Prayer is the communication between you and God. And so once you get the answer and you, you know now then, once that you, you know that you know, now you've got to know when and how. How, am I going, how, how do you want me to bring this about? There's some things on my face that the Lord gave me in um, uh, 2001. 2001. And this is what? 2021. So that's been 20 years that I've hid in my heart. And that I've told no one. Hid it in my heart. But on my face, the Lord gave, it was like watching a movie theater that I saw. And, uh, and the reason, see, a lot of time, you know, I like to say it like this. What's that old saying? Don't tell where you tied your goat. A lot of time we, we tell everything. Boy, as soon as the Lord says something, we go out and tell it and the devil heard it. The devil heard exactly what you said. And now then, you got to fight your way to, for that to come to pass. But I'm telling you, me and Sister Mary, we, we are a lot alike. We don't like telling it until it's all over with, and then we'll give you the testimony. But, but you know, uh, uh, what the Lord gives you, don't, don't, don't start second-guessing it. Don't start thinking, oh, that was probably me. Really, you really do think you'd be sitting around thinking about that, those kind of things that the Lord's wanting you to do. You really think you'd be that person? No. That's the Spirit of the Lord. Say this out loud. I've got the Spirit of the Lord on the inside of me. I've got the Spirit of the Lord inside of me. Do you? Yes. Okay, now let's say this. I have the Spirit of the Lord guiding me. I have the Spirit of the Lord guiding me. Do you? And I have the Spirit of the Lord leading me. Do you believe you do? Amen. Okay, so then if you've got confidence in that, you see, you've got to have confidence that the Word really works. Confidence that God's not a liar. And there's many times that when I don't see it and I don't feel it and, I, and there's every reason in the world for me not to believe that it's real. And if you think because you're a pastor that you don't have that stuff come here, you better think again. Because we all have the same enemy. I said we all have the same enemy. And so what you got to do when it comes right here is you, and you know, and I've done this before too. I can tell you, I've shut my eyes. I wouldn't, I'd shut my eyes just tight as I could get them. And I'd say, I'm not going to be moved by what I see, feel, hear, or think. I will only be moved by what the word said. And I'm telling you, I would stand there until I talk myself into it. Do you understand? But why would I have to talk myself into it? Because of what was, I was seeing in my natural senses. See, the, the, uh, the, the devil would like to tell me that some of my grandchildren are going to hell. Yeah, he'd like to tell me that. But you know, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to entertain that thought. Do you understand? Yeah. Don't entertain that thought. Do I have any control over, you know, look, listen, uh, as long as your children, and, and, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there, your children and grandchildren are under age, they're under you. Now, I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. They're subject to you. In other words, you go to heaven, they get to go to heaven. But when they become accountable, you know what? Guess what? They're on their own now. And that's why we pray. Say that out loud. That's why we pray. That's why we bring their names before the throne. Amen? And so when the enemy comes to say, yeah, I got this one, they don't even believe in God. They told you that. They don't even believe in God. And you know what I said? Well, that don't move me. 
That's the craziest thing I ever heard. How can you not believe in God? You know, but see what I'm saying today is you will always, there will always be opportunity for you to lose confidence in what that book says. And so I don't want us to get in a habit and a rut of just saying, okay, so I'm going to speak this word. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stand right here and speak this word when you're just as empty uh, of, of your confidence. But see, uh, there must be an excitement. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Okay, so here's how to know if you truly believe what you're saying. You'll get excited. There'll be such an excitement. Because, see, you know, like uh, if, if, you needed, uh, if you needed a new car or something, and uh, well, we'll just use that because everybody has to have a car sometime or another. But if you were going to get a new car and you were tired of, of that old rattle trap you're driving, breaking down on the side of the road, you'd get so excited knowing you don't have it yet, but knowing that you're going to get it. Okay, when you're not excited about the Word of God, you're not excited about what you're standing on, you need to check yourself that you're not confident that that book is telling the truth. When you really, really, and you know, I know I get on people's nerves because I stay excited a lot. But the reason I stay excited is not because I'm, you know, I'm all flippant here. It's because I truly have confidence that this book is a book of truth and that it will, say it will. It will change whatever situation I'm in. The book, this book right here. Not because I'm great, but because that I can have confidence that this is truth and that it will work. And so are we going to start checking ourselves to see how excited we are about the word of God? Amen. I'm telling you right now, we're big so excited that, you know, I can remember this. When the Lord healed me of emphysema, I couldn't wait to tell the whole world. The whole world, I didn't care. You think I stopped to see if they believed it or not? I didn't care. I love telling it. Boy, let me tell you, anywhere, anytime, I said, well, let me tell you what happened to me. And they'd be looking at me like, well, why are you telling me this? Because I had to tell it. Why? Because the excitement was that this God that I serve and this Lord really did perform a miracle on me, little on me. And that he's alive and he's real and he's not some myth or fable or it's not some psychological junk. See, it's exciting. Isn't that exciting? If we're not excited about the word of God, why not? It's because that it has become redundant to us. Thank you. Are we going to be excited now? Okay, you know what? I'm going to use Shelly. This morning, Shelly gave a testimony before she sang. Did y'all see any excitement in her? Huh? Boy, I did. Well, why would she get excited? Because the Lord healed her. Is that exciting? Okay, so has anybody in the house ever experienced healing? Let me see by raising their hand. You know that God healed you of something. Okay, then guess what? Healing, healing. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. Healing is a spiritual thing to a natural body. That's what it is. Isn't that right? Then anything that's spiritual is alive. So guess what you've got on the inside? If you've ever been healed one time in your life, guess what you got row on the in, in your spirit man is healing. You're not going to get healed of something else. You've already got healing on the, boy, I'm telling you, this is profound. This is good. That once, see, there's not, okay, yes. Healing is not something that, okay, so today I'm going to need a healing for a headache. And today I need a healing for cancer. And I need a healing for heart uh, trouble and I need a healing for bone marrow, a healing. No, healing is healing, okay? Uh, uh, I could show you a bottle of water, a little bottle, and it has water in it, right? I could have a, a clear pitcher here filled with water and guess what's in it? Same water. Or I could have a big bucket over here and, uh, and trying to carry it around, sloshing it all on the floor and guess what it is? Same water. Is that right? Okay, if you've ever been healed, you need to get light on this. Thank you, Father. You need to get light on this. If you've, had, if you've experienced healing in your body, then right now, say right now. Right now, right now faith is right now. Faith is right now. You have healing in, on, in you rolling right now in your body. 
You've got healing. The healer is on the inside of you. And see, you don't have to seek a healing. You seek the healer. Yes, amen. Got it? Yes. Now, has anybody in the house got healing going on on the inside of your body? Amen. Huh? Anybody on live stream? Have you got healing going on on the inside of your body right now? But see, you got to have confidence and you got to believe that, that that really is going on right now. See, when I lay down at night and I've got stuff going on against my body and things coming against me, then most of the time what I do is lay my hand on my, my core and I pray by the Spirit. But I'm not hoping that I get better and I'm not, and I'm not trying to quote Scripture, quote it, quote it, quote it, quote it, quote it, quote it. No, I have confidence that the healer is living on the inside of me and that he's been taking care of me for right now I don't even know how many years and that he's not going away he's not leaving me do you understand so where's my confidence at my confidence is in that this word told me the truth got it is this good are we learning okay okay Okay, so then I looked up it said now faith is the substance of things of things hoped for of things hoped for. I don't have faith for, for uh, I'm not trying to believe for that, that that wall is painted. I'm not trying to believe. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm holding on to my faith that I'm trying to believe that the wall is painted. Well, I can see with my natural eyes the wall is painted. But it is things in the natural that I'm trying to hold on to for my faith. My faith has got to work for me. Listen, if you're jobless and you need a job, then your faith needs to be working for you that believing that you're, you're not going to go get a job, that you've got a job, you're just going to walk into it. Do you understand? Okay. See, it said things. In the original Greek, I got this out of the Greek. Uh, boy, I love this. Because we just kind of sloughed that scripture off. But it said, a deed, a deed. That's something that happened, right? A deed. An affair, an affair, an object, a material, an object. Oh, I love this one, business. Have you ever felt in your heart that you're supposed to start a business or be involved in a business and fear shut you up? Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to now, but, you know, we have to look at this. Let me tell you something. If you know that you know on the inside of you, it is like a, can I say gnawing? It is like a, it won't go away. It's like it's on the inside of you. Instead of you saying, well, I just, you know, I, I know I probably should, I probably should start a business, but I don't know. I just, you just keep feeling like I need to, I need to, you know, but I don't know what to do. No, you, you're talking wrong and you're praying wrong. What you need to be doing is this. Let me show you. Confidence. Here's what confidence would say. Thank you, Father, for my new business. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you in advance. And I praise you for giving me the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the when, where, and how. And, and that I just want to thank you for it. And right now, I'm excited. And you know what? You'll get so excited. Every day, you'll wake up thinking, Phew, boy, I'm one day closer to getting my new business started. I'm one day closer. I'm so excited. Isn't that wonderful? But see, where's our excitement? You say, well, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't know how to start. I don't know anything about that. What do you, can you have confidence that God will give it to you? Can you have confidence? You know, I know y'all looking at me like a tree full of hoot owls, but, you know, I got to preach this because we preach to thousands of people. You know, I got to tell, I got to tell you that that this thing of called faith is for every area of your life. Yes. E say every area. every area. You know, have you have you been a, a a failure at something? Can you trust and believe God that He's going to make you not only an overcomer but an overachiever in it? Can can you believe God for that? See, I believe, I, I, I know this. I know that when I was going to manage that dress shop, and I didn't, had never done that junk before, and I knew I needed a job, had prayed about it, and I, I, I know it come to me. Well, God, you put a, a red rose on a green stem, planted it in brown dirt against a blue sky, and it turned out beautiful. 
And I need your wisdom to do this. See, it, it, okay, but if I had said that and then said, well, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I guess I better pray about it and fast for six months. See if I can get God to help me out here. I don't know. See, do you see what I'm saying? But I was confident. Why was I confident? Because of what I saw of the things that I could touch and see. See, I was confident because I'd seen a rose before. Because I had seen the handiwork of God. So since I saw it in the natural realm, I didn't have to go to heaven to see a rose, did I? I saw that. That tangible thing, that material, God help me to get this out of here. Uh, that tangible thing that I could see and touch and hold. And so I had eyes that I could see that. That gave me confidence to trust that God is the God of color. That he's the one who built the, the rainbows. He is the one of color. And I needed an eye of color to be able to do what was in front of me. Understand? And that's why on the first day of that business, I was a top salesperson on that day of grand opening. A little girl that didn't have any education in it and didn't know nothing about nothing. It was because of my confidence that God is the God of all the universe. And that when I presented it to him and my need, I presented my need. Whoa, I'm telling you, how many in the house that's in sales, you're going to be the top salesperson in that place. See, what I'm telling you today is that you can be you can be on the low limb. How many in the house that's over 50 that your mind's made up? I'm full of health and, and I'm, he- I'm healthy down to the core. See, you've got to make your mind up. I'm not giving in to that junk because I got a God who said he'll renew my strength. He will cause me to rise upon my high places. Oh, you know, that's just psychological stuff. That is bull. Y'all better take that to the bank because there's a lot of psychological people out there that's crippled, bent over, old, decrepit, that can't hardly get around. But you know what? Get your mind made up. I'm full of health, not because I'm great, because he promised and I can have confidence. I can have confidence that this book is true. Amen. Whoo, hallelujah. Boy, I'm telling you, I got to take a breather here. This is some good stuff. Amen. And, uh, okay, so now then, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, You know, underneath the things in the Greek, original Greek, there was a lot under there. One of them was to practice, perform repeatedly. Oh, I love this. Or habitually. Okay, so let me teach you about faith. This is something that must be become a way of life. It cannot be something that uh, you have a need and then believe and have a need and then believe. It must, you must be, let's say this out loud. If you're a woman, say, I am a woman of faith. faith. And if you're a man, I need you to say, I am a man of faith. I'm a man of faith. Faith is, uh, you must practice. See, under, the, under that word things, it said you got to practice it. How many knows? See, I remember that when I first uh, was a little girl, and of course I had a big 26-inch boy's bike to try to learn to ride because, you know, we were poor and that's all we had. But I remember uh, the first time I crawled on that bicycle, boy, I wrecked it terribly. I couldn't even stand up and walk for three days. That handlebar right in my side. And I remember that, just little, little girl. But did you know that didn't stop me from wanting to get back on it? And even though knowing that I was probably going to wreck it again, but I kept getting back on it, I was practicing. I was practicing until I got it right. And then once I got it right, boy, I could fly down, (laughs) let me tell you, I could pedal that thing and fly down that lane. It was so much fun. Why? Because I conquered it. Okay, so now I need you to see this today. When you are practicing faith, you are going to have to 
be, be re, uh, repetitious with it. You're going to have to keep, you say, well, how do I do that, okay? Uh, we'll say that you're dealing with a, a headache. I'll just use a headache. That's mine or everybody's had one one time or another. Okay, so you've got a headache and uh, and so you're 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 standing on the scripture uh, and you're believing. You're believing that you don't have to have a headache. And uh, you say, uh, you know, I'm standing here and Lord I, I thank you that that my uh, that I don't have to have this headache. I thank you that you carried it. And, uh, and I believe your word. I'm standing on your word. I have confidence in your word. And then you're, you're standing, and the headache didn't go away. You end up going in there, getting your Tylenol or ibuprofen or whatever it is you take. Okay. There's your bicycle wreck. You understand? That doesn't mean that you, you failed. That means, say this out loud, that just means I'm practicing. That just means I'm practicing. I'm practicing my faith. Okay, so now then the next time you have a headache, what are you going to do? Oh, well, I tried that and that didn't work. No. No, that's not what you're going to do. What you're going to do is say, Father, I thank you that I can live free of headaches. I just want to thank you for that. I just want to thank you that with your stripes I'm healed. I am healed. I am healed. I'm healed. I thank you that I believe your word and your word is in me and I just want to praise you for that. Okay, so it, let, it lets up, but it didn't go away. But it's better. It's better. Say this out loud. I'm still practicing. Huh? Huh? I'm practicing. See, God doesn't withhold anything. But you got to get this today if you don't get anything else. Your headache was paid for over 2,000 years ago. Amen. Paid for. Done. And so, if I'm, if I'm not walking where I'm free of that headache... It's not God's fault because he already paid for it. Is that right? Yes. And the Bible says that we have all authority and dominion over the power of darkness. And so it must be my lack of understanding of how to release my faith. So I've got to practice some more. Amen? Amen. Amen. But wouldn't you rather practice until you got it right than to let the enemy take you off the earth before your time? Huh? Did we get this? Are we getting it? Is this good teaching? Good sound doctrine? Okay. Okay. And then, uh, okay, and it says, now faith is a substance of things, and we got the substance and we got the things, but it says of things hoped for, hoped for. And you know, I used to say this, and, and the Lord reprimanded me on it, <laughs> and I, I had to quit saying it. That a hope would just keep a smile on your face while your ship's sinking. I used to say that. But that's not true. Hope. Hope. Uh, okay, yes. I'll use that wall again. I'm not, uh, I'm not in this house hoping, hoping uh, that that wall is painted. I can see that it's painted. So I'm not hoping for that wall to get painted. Hope is something that I'm anticipating for. See, a lot of time we look at hope like this, that we're almost despond in despondency. That, you know, we're almost, I don't want to say doubting, but that we kind of look at it like we're just hanging. You know, remember that cat on the card? We're just hanging on by the tip of our thumb. We're just, our hope is just trying to keep us Keep us attached just a little bit longer. But see, that's not true. Because our hope is our expectation. Okay. If I uh, wanted that wall to be painted uh, a dark gray, and I'd talked to the men in this church, and we'd already talked about it, and bought the paint, and I'm hoping, I'm, but see, my hope causes me to expect to see it change color. Is that right? Yes. Then my hope is attached to my faith because my hope is keeping my eyes with expectancy until my faith brings it to pass. Got it? So we, we need to keep our hope. Amen? Okay. So what he said, now faith is a substance, faith is a substance of things, of things, tangible things, 
hoped for. Okay, so my hope will keep me excited and expecting my faith to move that mountain that needs to be moved. Okay? Yes. Yes. And my hope will bring me pleasure. Well, how can that be? You're, I'm sitting here hoping and believing for the wall to turn gray. But the pleasure that my hope will bring me is because of the confidence that I have that it's going to come to pass, that I don't no longer visualize the wall being an off-white. I begin to see it by faith, and that's what brings me pleasure. Got it? Yes. We got it? Okay. Okay. So now, um, we're going to look at the word evidence. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, evidence of things not seen in the natural senses. So evidence is the proof, and I like this word that fell under there, conviction. Evidence. The evidence is the proof. So although I don't see the wall gray yet, and although my hope Gives me pleasure in, in my eyes that I see it. Yes, and uh, Sister Marie, the, Lord, uh, the Spirit of the Lord just wants me to, to share with you uh, to take pleasure about Donovan. Uh, yes, yes, and don't get moved. Uh, don't, don't even, don't, yeah, uh, just, just, but just get blind to anything else other than the pleasure about all of that business right there. Whew, boy, I'm telling you, I, I'm going to take me some of that. I'm going to take me some of that. Yeah. Okay, so the evidence is the proof. And so here, here we go. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so although I see the walls gray, the evidence... The evidence of that, the excitement of it, is that although I don't see it yet, I see a bucket of paint, and I see rollers, and I see things that are bringing it to pass. And oh, Woo, glory. Even though that there is nothing changed that I can see in the natural senses yet, but I'm beginning to see some change going around me. And there are changes, and, uh, and God is bringing you to that place of, of fullness for what he's got in store for you. See, all the things that you walked through and all the things that you've had to deal with and cope with, but God was taking those things and began to turn them and turn them to cause you to walk, to be a man and a woman of faith. See, because of the things that you say, yeah, but I've lived most of my life out, but he's not done. Say this out loud, he's not done with me yet. He's not done. Let's do it again. He's not done with me yet. And so therefore, there are things that I got to learn about my faith and my confidence, not in just saying it, saying it, saying it, saying it, and seeing nothing happen, but getting excited and getting the evidence and beginning to see the things change. And listen, if you, if you have to do this, you have to got to shut your eyes and say, Lord, I thank you that every one of my, of my children, my grandchildren, they're all smart as a whip. They can all walk and talk and, and they can all, all do great exploits for you. If you got to shut your eyes to say it, shut your eyes and say it so you can get your eyes back on your confidence. Amen. Got it? Amen. Got it. Woo, glory. I'm telling you, I'm getting excited now. All right, here we go. And I know I'm keeping you a little bit late today, but that's all right. Say, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. If you're going out to eat, you'll just get the fresh food. Amen. Amen. Okay, but it says, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, we've got that, the natural senses. But let me tell you what faith is, according to the Greek. The truthfulness of God. You need to write that down. 
the truthfulness of God. The reliance upon Christ for salvation. Constancy in such profession. Assurance, assurance. Now then, in the same way that you have an assurance that Jesus Christ saved your soul. Do you have an assurance of that? I mean, if every atheist came to you today and had all the proof, their, their proof, that there is no God, do you know how far they'd get with me? Zero. Zero. And they could show me all the documentation, and they could show me everything they had. And you know what? It'd be like the wind blowing. Why? Because I have absolute confidence and assurance that I have been born again. There's nobody can take that from me. Nobody. Okay. My faith that I've been truly born again, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to go to bed hoping that I'm saved. Get up in the morning, boy, it's a new, new day. I hope I'm saved today. See, I don't have to think, I don't have to worry about thinking about that. Okay, then if you and I can take that principle, say that principle, that, principle. that same principle, and use it in the whole Word of God, yes, we will begin to see in the natural realm the things that our faith, is causing to come to pass. Are we getting it? Are we getting this? Because see, if we're not having to worry or fret or hope that we're saved, but it's the same Christ. It's the same Christ that upon himself took all the sorrow and grief and bore it in my place. It's the same Christ that, that will cause me to, to have my, my, my mind renewed every morning when I get up. It's that same Christ. Yeah. Then I can believe that. You say, yeah, but depression's there. Yeah, but worry and anxiety comes against me. Well, of course it's going to. You're a Christian. Of course it is. But what I do with it is what determines where my faith is. Got it? Yes. Got it? And so if I can believe that Jesus saved me, then I can also believe that he can renew my mind. Can we do that? Amen. Okay, good deal. All right, now turn to Romans. I'm going to get you out of Hebrews. Say, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Woo. Let's see. We're going to go to Romans 8, 24 through 28 says... For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. See, that's what we talked about a while ago. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? He don't. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience. Okay, now here we go. Remember I said we got to practice this thing. We got to try it over and over and over again. So there's where our patience comes in. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Remember, I used the example of the wall. The wall being painted gray. Then my patience would cause me to wait for it to come to pass. But my confidence is that it is going to come to pass. Not maybe, not might be. No, no. I'm not going to have to ask over and over and over and over and over again because my faith and my confidence is that it's going to come to pass, but my patience will cause me to wait for it. Amen? How many in the house needs help with the patience? Uh I thought so. We all do. Likewise, or here we go. Now get this, verse 26. Likewise, in in other words, this same example, likewise the spirit, the spirit, not your spirit man, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. 
for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But, but, the Spirit itself, say the Spirit itself. The Spirit itself, the Spirit itself makes intercession for us. And you know what intercession is? When you, enter, when you are interceding, you are going in behalf of that person. In behalf of that person, it's like you're standing in their stead. That's what it's like. Okay, so the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts, that's the Spirit, he that searches the hearts knoweth. He already knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Does the Spirit have its own mind? Yes. So this, this Spirit that searches my heart and that is praying through me with his language is praying for me for things that I don't even know I need. But he is interceding, standing in my behalf. Now do you understand why that, that being filled with the Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues is fought? So much by most religions. It's deception. And so you won't let the Spirit pray through you and pray for the things you have need of. I can say this with my natural mind. I might be praying all day long. Lord, I don't want this rain. I'm tired of the rain. I just want sunshine. We just want the sunshine. When in reality, I need the rain because if I don't get the rain, everything around me is going to be dead. Do you understand? So if I'm praying by my spirit, by the spirit that is in me, my spirit is allowing the spirit to pray through me. Do you understand? Then it's praying for things that I have need of. Okay, here we go. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints. Not according to my will, but it's according to the will of God. That, you know what? You need to be all excited right now. You should be so excited you can't hardly stand yourself to know that there is a spirit on the inside of you that is praying the will of God. The will of God. Oh, my goodness. It makes me want to just go get myself shut in and just do nothing but pray by the Spirit right now. Because guess what God's will is? That you be healthy, wealthy, and wise. That you be youthful. That you be full of energy. That you be full of life. That you have the desires of your heart. I could go on and on and on and on what the will of God is for you. And now i got a Spirit on the inside of me that is praying the will of God for my life. Woo! I'm excited. Hallelujah. Isn't this exciting? Woo, glory. I'm telling you, it makes me want to shout. Okay, here we go. Turn to Mark 11. Mark 11. Matthew, Mark. Mark 11. Are we getting this today? Okay. <clears throat> Mark 11, verse 24 through 28 says, Therefore, I say unto you, what things, remember things are something tangible. You can see it, feel it. What things soever you desire, you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's pretty simple, isn't it? But you notice it didn't say things that you desire when you're out and about and doing stuff. Let's, let's read it. Let's look at it. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. What's the next three words? When you pray. When you pray. The things that you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them. When do I receive them? What? I'm sorry. What was that? So, the things that I desire... Okay, if I truly receive them, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to get excited. I'm going to get so excited, I'm going to see it by faith. 
I'm going to know it's going to happen by faith. Amen? Okay. So I, so I actually received it when I prayed. But what's the next word say? Then I should, yeah, and I shall have it. I shall have what I prayed for. Boy, how good is that? Verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you trespasses. I'd like to cut that out of the book, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you just like to hold it against them? Boy, I'm going to hold it against them for a long time breathing. But see, you can't. If you want your prayers answered. And I'm going to tell you this, there's not a soul in this earth that I'd rather hold something against and not get my prayers answered. Wouldn't you? When you just go ahead, let's just say this out loud, I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to forgive them. Anyway. Just going to forgive them because my prayers are being answered. Amen. Boy, we're getting this. We're getting this, aren't we? Amen. Okay. Let's look at a Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4. We're almost done. Proverbs chapter 4. I love the Word of God. Don't you love the Word of God? And we're going to get verse 20 through 22. Now, this is talking, say this out loud, this is talking to us. Mm -hmm. Verse 20 says, My son, attend to my words, and climb thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And what's the next word? Health. To all. To how much? How much? To all their flesh. Okay, so let me show you something here. It says, my son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Verse 21 says, let them not depart from thine eyes. Now let me show you what you got to do here. Okay, the rest of that scripture that says this word, this word is life to me and that it's health, it's it's health to all of my flesh, which means that when sickness tries to come against me, the word itself will will cause that thing to the the strength of it to break off of me that causes it uh, to not prevail. You say, yeah, but my leg's still hurting. Yeah, but my back's still killing me. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Because, you know, we get caught up in that sometimes. Come on now, let's, say, let's don't get all, you know, like we're not human beings because we're all human. And we all get caught up sometimes. So what is he telling me to, to not, to, so that won't be happening to me? Let me tell you what he's telling you. When he said keep it, keep, or let's, let me look at it again. Verse 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Okay, so my eyes of faith, now we're back on faith again. My eyes of faith is going to keep the confidence, my confidence and my excitement that the Word is working mightily in me. Even though I don't feel it, touch it, see it, smell it, taste it, none of those things. But my confidence, not in the circumstance, but my confidence in the word that it is a living word and it's alive. And that health and healing is rolling up inside of me all the time. That it's going on all the time. That confidence will keep, my, keep the word of God right. Listen, if you have to like, a, like keeping a pair of horses together, you've got to get, get the word like right here. You've got to keep it right here that all this other, you're still seeing it and you're still experiencing it and you're still feeling it and it's all still going on. But what have I got to do? I've got to stay confident. You say, yeah, but I can't quote the word. Well, neither can I. You know what? But let me tell you, I know what it says and I believe what it says. Now, I may not tell you where it is. I'm not smart like Jackie, but uh, in that in that aspect. But I, I may not can you, I may have to tell you, wait a minute and I'll go find it for you. But I know what it says yes. and I know who it says it's for. That if it says that he will renew my, he'll renew my youth, I can tell you right now, I'm planning on staying young the rest of my life. How about you? 
You know, I want to pray. You know, I got lots of testimonies. I could stand up here and keep you all day long of the things that God has healed me of. See, I don't tell stuff. Time after time after time after time. And during that time, but see, I can teach you because I can use myself for an example. During that time, right here, right here would come, oh, this is going to take you out. You know the symptoms. You know what you've got. You know what's going on. You know. You're not going to make it through this one. See, right here, right here. Your kids are going to end up having to take care of you right here. You see, maybe y'all don't have, maybe y'all are, you know, Mr. and Ms. Spiritual. But I'm telling you right here, that's where the battle is. And so, okay, but what did I just read? But I've got to keep the word in my eyes. What does that mean? That my eyes are going to see the word instead of what my head's saying. Because it didn't say my head's not going to say junk. Your head's going to say junk. Say that out loud. My head's going to say junk. But I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to pull down that stronghold. And I'm going to keep my eyes on the Word. And see right there. So, so, so the Word says that with the stripes I'm healed. And the Word says that the Spirit itself makes intercession for me. And the Word says that He's renewing my youth. And the Word says, and the Word says. And so see, i got to keep that right there. Until my hope brought me to see the thing change through faith. Did we get it? So now, are we all going to have temptations and trials and tribulations in our life? Hmm? Hmm? Are we going to have stuff come right here? Let me tell you something. When I first got saved, you know what stuff came to me right here? When I first got saved, oh, you didn't get saved. You didn't get saved. Look at you. Huh? Do you all ever hear that? Yes. But you remember what we did? You know what we did? We made it through it, didn't we? And we made it to a place that we thought, you might as well peddle those peaches somewhere else because I'm not buying none of that. I know I'm saved. See, do you understand? Okay, then that same principle is what we're going to use to walk in, abide in, live in, take up residence in the rest of that Word of God. Did we get this today? Amen. Is this exciting? Yeah. Oh, okay, yes, and I'll give that to him. Uh, you can write down 1 John. 1 John chapter 5, two verses. You can write that down. In fact, I'll run over there and read it while y'all write it down. 1 John chapter 5, two verses says, and this is the confidence. See, we've been talking about that. i got to have confidence, not just me sp uh, speaking the word over and over and over and over, and I'm just empty with that. I'm just saying the word because somebody told me to say the word, and that's what's going to happen. No, the confidence is that it is coming to pass. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything According to his will. Remember a while ago, we talked about that the Spirit itself is praying the will of God for our life. Right? And what's his will? His will is for you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's his will. Right? Have we got that settled? Okay. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. It. Is God hearing you? Can you confidently say today, I know God is hearing me. Oh, yes. Look at verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know. Now, there's where our hope is carrying us into our faith. We know, not hope, but we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So if I really do know it, my excitement's going to show. It is going to show. It's, it's, just, it's, gonna, it's probably going to make me look like a fool sometimes. Because when I'm saying, oh, I'm, you, I'm so excited, look at, our, look at our gray walls. And everybody be saying, have you lost your mind? Those walls aren't gray, they're white. Yeah, but I can see it by faith, I know. Do you understand? Okay, okay. 
So uh, the Lord wanted me to give you this as an example, and you, uh, you can write this down. How to speak the word and how to stand on it. And this is just one scripture that is for knees, uh, for, uh, knees and feet. This is a scripture for you to use for your knees and feet. And it is Hebrews 12. And you can write this down, put it in your scriptures. And I can tell you, it will behoove you to start your little book. This is for uh, depression, and this is for knees and feet, and this is for uh, backs and whatever. You need to start doing that. It is Hebrews 12, verse 12 and 13. Hebrews 12, verse 12 and 13. And I'm going to read it to you so you understand how to use it. Because the Lord uh, unctioned me to give you an example of how to stand on the Word. And, um, okay, so let's say that your knees, you've got problem going on, knees and feet. And, uh, and you, you, believe, you believe that the Word of God is true. You, got, you must believe or you receive nothing. Right? So, so now it's settled that you do believe the Word of God. And, and you've got problems in your knees and feet. Okay? Verse 12 says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And the feeble knees. Verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet. Make straight paths for your feet, lest, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Do you see that? Okay, so now then, for those of you who have, are having difficulty with your knees and feet, I now gave you a scripture to get in front of you. Look, you know what are you going to do? Remember what we talked about a while ago. So you're going to get that word in front of you, and what are you going to do? Your knees and feet have trouble, problem, hurting, whatever. Doctor says this, and you know the word says this. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get, I'm going to get it said, we just read a while ago. It said, keep, keep God's word in your eyes. Let your ears hear it, but keep it in your eyes. So what am I going to do? In the midst of my knees and feet hurting, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to keep the Word of God in front of me. So what have I got to do? I'll tell you this. If you go to the doctor and the doctor says, I need you to take this medicine for the next two weeks. I need you to take it uh, three times a day. You know what? You'll do that. If you have to set your clock, you'll do it without fail. And then we'll quote the scripture one time. And then when I, we don't see miracles and great things flashing and running. Well, I tried that and that didn't work. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. When he said practice till, you, practice till it's perfect. Okay, so what am I going to do? Every day I'm going to get up and I'm going to say, uh, look, I'm going to get that word in front of me. And I'm going to say, Father, I just want to thank you for Hebrews 12.12. 12. I just want to thank you that my, even my knees and feet are covered. I just want to thank you for that. And according, according to that scripture, you said I can lift up my hands. I can lift up my hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And I just want to thank you that you've covered feeble knees. Boy, isn't that exciting? Is that exciting? That you could take the word of God and your body begin to change and be healed. Is that not exciting? I mean, that's exciting to me. I can tell you. I don't, I don't want to go have knee surgery if I don't have to have knee surgery. How about you? I don't want to be crippled in my feet and legs. How about you? But now then, I've got a word of God that if I will do my work and keep it in front of me, that word of God will cause that thing to come to pass because yes. God's will. Did we get it? Yes. Stand your feet. And again, I kept you a little late, but I'm not sorry. Okay, so you know Jackie has Bible study for men. Every other Tuesday night, the next, uh, the next Bible study will be uh, the 28th of this month. And you men, it's one hour. And in that one hour, Jackie is teaching 
the basics of Christianity. That's what he's teaching. He's teaching you how to not just be born again, but he's teaching you what we've been talking about today, how to get that word off of them pages, get it activated in your life, and then you carry it and teach somebody else. And then they'll carry it and teach somebody else. And that's what that's for. So Tuesday night, say Tuesday night. At 6.30. 630. Every other Tuesday night. night. It's about men's Bible study. And it only lasts one hour. hour. You can carve one hour out of a 24-hour day and and glean from the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, be sure and share with everybody. And then uh, Wednesday night, be back at 7 to experience the will of God. Amen. Amen. Did we receive this word today? Do we understand? Do we understand about having confidence and believing it for ourselves, our own personal life? And what we are to expect. What we are to look at and expect. Expectation. You say, yeah, but, but Sister Barbara, I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to get excited. I'm afraid to expect because if, if, I, if I don't get it, I'll be so disappointed. Can I tell you, if you don't get it, you're going to be disappointed anyway. Isn't that true? So why not get excited about the Word of God bringing it to pass? See, that's the devil trying to cheat you out of your excitement. Have I got anybody in the house excited? Yes. Amen. We're excited. Hallelujah. Okay. And uh, I'm, I, I'm a boast Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, by Let's just praise him for a moment, saints. Let's just praise him. The Holy Ghost is in the house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Jackie, I just feel like you've got a word this morning. Yes, I already have the mic here. Uh, you say, oh, I don't want to get their hopes up. But my word says, hope is joyful, confident expectation. Yes. You dash people's hopes to the ground by unbelief. Yes. But my word says, faith rejoices in the word of God. My word, my word stands. Yes. And my encouragement to you is to, yes, let that hope, that joyful, confident expectation rise up in you based on the word. With the word in front of you, as you have heard today, with the word in front of you, rejoice in that word. Choose to rejoice in that word. Let that word fill you and pervade you completely because as that happens, my word comes to pass. I confirm my word with signs following. Thank you, Lord. Remember, yes, get your hopes up based on the word. The joyful, confident expectation yes. that I will do what I say I will do. Rejoice in my faithfulness to you yes. and you will see things come to pass more and more as you practice in and walk in this faith that I have given you, says the Lord. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody in the house need a healing this morning? Anybody in the house need prayer? All right. Shelly, did we have any uh, 
prayer request on the okay and just to let you know on live stream that um, when we have prayer requests come in that shows up after the service that we pray for you just need you to know that uh, get excited about the Lord there is a great the Lord just wants us to know there are great expectations great expectations my goodness Lisa, there's going to be change for you in this upcoming year. There's going to be change. Uh, some stability and stableness there that uh, the Lord just wants me to tell you to start praying it up now. This is going to happen in this upcoming year. just need to know that. Yes. Yes. And uh, Marty, the Lord just wants me to tell you that um, that it's been like a sense of just being real still. You've just felt real still. And I know you've uh, been under some battles and things, but the Lord said it's in the quiet time that I talk to you. It is in the quiet time. That's what he says to you, son. It's in that quiet time that I talk to you, says the Lord. I talk to you. And so in that quiet time, it's not just you thinking about things. It is the Lord talking to you in the quiet time. Yes. Yes. And uh, I just need to remind you. Yes. I need to remind you that, uh, that when you pray by the Spirit, you need to very often call your daughter's name out and pray by the Spirit. Yes, you need to do that. You pray that up and call her name out. Yes, thank you. My goodness, thank you. Boy, he's wonderful. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Yes. Praise your name, Jesus. Just I'm just waiting a minute to make sure that the, the Holy Ghost is through. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And uh, Jackie, the the Spirit of the Lord uh, just uh, just wants me to let you know that uh, that there is an explosion. Of uh, I see greenery on it's it's on the inside of you like uh, like big plants like like uh, big greenery plants is the only I I don't I'm not knowledgeable of what plants are but it is like healthy uh, very healthy very vibrant uh, big uh, uh, plants and it's like the the seeds. Uh, that has been uh, implanted in you uh, that even even some of those seeds have been dormant. Uh, but the Lord says to tell you uh, that, that those seeds are springing forth quickly. I see it just quickly like a, a, a plant, oh, almost like overnight, that it's just, it's just big and, and boisterous and vibrant and uh, uh, you're going to have an excitement like you've never had about the Word. Uh, you've, uh, you've been excited and you've been, uh, uh, your, your confidence is in the Word. But the Lord said because of the explosion of the seed that you are going to be so excited about the things of God and uh, don't worry. Uh, the Lord said, don't even concern yourself with what your future holds because he already has it all laid out and you'll just walk into it, says the Lord. Yes. Thank you. Let's just praise him for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to hold on for a minute. 
Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's pray. Saints, can we praise him? Can we just praise him in the house? He's in the house. We, are we that big of a hurry? Let's don't be in a hurry. Let's just praise him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And uh, Jeffrey, I need to say this to you that um, that for a season of time now, uh, you you've been planting. It uh, it's it's like you've been um, like you're planting a garden. Actually, you've been planting for a, a season of time. Uh, but the Lord wants me to tell you that now is a new season and it's the benefits that you are going to uh, begin to experience, uh, experience the benefits. And he says it's like when you uh, plant a garden and when you're first planting it, and you, you, you look at it by faith, eyes of faith, that your, those tomatoes are going to come up and the, the beans are going to come up and the things that you, that you planted, you haven't worried about it because you expect it to come up. But the Lord said that you're ready for the benefit package, package to begin, for you to begin to see the fullness of the benefits. And uh, he, you need to get into Psalms 103 and and uh, verses 1 through 5, but he says, you meditate in it, you quote it, you speak it, you get that on the inside of you and begin to watch it come to pass, says the Lord. Yes. Whew. My goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the fullness of time. Thank you, Lord, for the fullness of time. Thank you that the things that you have set in place and set in motion shall come to pass. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. And uh, there is, uh, I, I'm going to say this to the live stream, that it looks absolutely impossible, but God is making a way where there seems to be absolutely no way, but God is right now making a way for you. And you know who you are and you know what it is about, but God is present tense right here, right now, making a way for you. And stop worrying about the situation. You need to just let it go. Put it in God's hands and know. You need to know today, confidently know, that God is working on this for you. Yes. Whoo, yeah, I think I will sit down a minute. My goodness. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise him, saints. Let's praise him just for a moment. Praise him just for a moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, come on, let's praise him, saints. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
good and in truth, we worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Oh, just to take him. Just to take him at his word. Tis so sweet just to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word. You know, Linda, I've got to say this to you, sweetie. Uh, I see you uh, even as a little. Um, a precious a, a piece of paper or a precious butterfly, something very fragile. That's what I see. And, the, and I see the Lord. You know, when you have jewels and something of worth, that sometimes you'll get a box, like a trinket box, because you don't want it to get marred, you don't get a mess up, and you'll put it in that box because it's all yours and you say keep it and I see the Lord that he just I just keep seeing this so I got to tell you what I'm seeing I'm seeing him taking your your the preciousness your the precious uh, gentleness of you and putting it in his own little box because he's you're all his and that he's safekeeping he's got a box for your safekeeping the devil wants to take you out but the Lord says, I got a box for you for safekeeping. That I'm keeping you safe in my box. I'm taking care of you. I'm not, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let that happen. But I'm gonna keep you safe. Boy, isn't that beautiful? Safekeeping. Boy, I love it. Don't you love it? Boy, I'm tell, I'm telling you, he's been in the house today. And, uh, you know, Joellen, uh, the Lord sees your desires, and he's heard your prayers, but he sees your desires. And even though on the outside you may get uh, caught up with, you know, taking care of stuff and getting things done and all that, but the Lord just wants me to remind you that he's, he's looking in your heart. He's not looking in your head. He's looking in your heart. And he just wanted me to remind you that the plans and the purpose that he has for you are the things that are already in your heart. They're in your heart. <laughs> Ooh, I'm telling you, isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? And Shelly, the Lord, I just need to remind you that that lately, as of lately, you've been experiencing some things from God. It took God to heal your body. It took God to touch you and things. But he wanted me to remind you that there was a breaking forth here in a service recently. There was a breaking forth, and that breaking forth was that of the Spirit and not of the flesh, but of the spirit. But he said to tell you, you are going to see many healings and many miracles because of whose you are. My goodness. A repairing and a restoring Hallelujah. Yes. And Vicki, you are doing what the Lord called you to do. 
You have no idea, but God knows the lives that are being touched because of who you pray for. And when you lift them up, you need to know every time you lift them up, you have God's attention. He's hearing and seeing and knowing. And you say, yeah, but there's so much chaos going on around me. There's so much going on around me. But God is not affected by the chaos. The things are coming to pass because that you, you are stepping into that call. And you are yielding to that place. Yes, even when you're laying in bed and not feeling well yourself, there have been times that the Lord has brought people for you to pray for. And you prayed for them. And even though you were dealing with things going on in your body, at that very moment, those prayers were being answered. Hallelujah. Ooh, isn't it wonderful being the house of the Lord? Wonderful being the house of the Lord. Amen. Judy, the Lord loves you with an undying love. He loves you more than what you could ever imagine and ever know. There are no depths to measure it. There are no heights to expound above it. But that love is an ever-going, ever-flowing love. He knows, but he understands, fully understands. And there's a couple of things that you've desired that just get excited about it. Just get excited, yes. Well, have we been in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Yes. And you know, I, I need to remind you, there's business cards out there on that table back there. They're the best tool for uh, sharing. If you're out and about and you just want to tell somebody about your church, just give them that card and say, we live stream. Just tune us in. It's on there. All right. Is hearts free? Hearts are free. Say this out loud. My heart is free. I received that word today. That God is working, Jesslyn, behind the scenes. I need to say that to you. God is working behind the scenes. And um, I came from working in a world of theater. I came from working... Uh, not in theater, but behind the scenes. And the, the, where the, the most of the work is, is behind the scenes for that hour of performance to happen. But the performance will happen because God is working behind the scenes. Amen. Boy, is that good. All right, are you ready for a blessing? I'm blessed. I'm really blessed. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to, God causes it to prosper. Our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and the powerful Word of God and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full, filled up. And running over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.